Yeah, uh, good morning, folks. Great to hear those uh, opening titles again. And great to have you all here with us um, for this launch and this announcement of the new, the extension of the partnership uh, between uh, Virgin Media Television and the League of Ireland for another season. I think um, some of us, a few of us were in this room maybe about six months or so ago um, for uh, the announcement of the, the deal we had last season, which was very much Uh, Virgin Media Television kind of dipping its toes into the water um, of showing live League of Ireland uh, matches and seeing how things went. And I think we couldn't uh, be more delighted to be here back again announcing uh, an even bigger expanded deal. And uh, Louise actually pointed out to me before this, it's actually a doubled uh, in size this year compared to what we, we did last year. So uh, from seven games last season over the course of the season, we're going to be uh, showing uh, 14 games Uh, across the Premier Division season, including the, the playoff um, final. Um, and I think we're all delighted because we all, from our side of view of the house, from the, the, the production, sports production side, really loved working on the matches. Um, and big reason for that is the huge momentum that's behind the league uh, now that, that everybody knows about, I think, at this stage. Um, and I think the, the number was last season, a 20% increase on uh, attendances in that side of the house. And I think somebody will tell me the, the exact numbers, but if you go back over the last five years, decade, it's it's a 100% increase in some of the clubs in terms of attendances and interest. And it's great to be a part of that and growing that further. And I think what the, one of the things that we really enjoyed doing as well was not just showing the matches, not just talking about the matches with with Brian and co, who's, uh, who's with us today, um, but also promoting the matches and talking about the matches across the other programs, um, the social media channels and all that stuff. Um, so it's been great to be involved in that. As you can see, if you've, if you've got the press release or you'll be getting the press release, um, we've got seven dates confirmed uh, this side of the, the, the mid-season break. Um, so all this is embargoed until one o'clock, just to remind you about that. Um, and it's all kicking off on the uh, 4th of March, the Monday, with probably the biggest game of the first sort of few weeks of the season, which is the champions, Richie's boys, Shamrock Rovers, uh, up against uh, Derry City. So that's a, that's a cracking game to get going with. Uh, then we'll have Morris and his guys, um, the TV cameras, will be heading to Eamon DC Park uh, on uh, Monday, April the 1st for Galway playing Bowes, Dale's uh, crowd. Uh, and then Shells with Paddy and Co. will be playing Rovers on uh, Monday, April 22nd. As I said, four more dates then before that mid-season break with more details to come uh, on all that. So I know you want to get a chance to, to chat to the lads and talk about the season that's, uh, that's on the way. So we have uh, four Um, of the, the protagonists who've dragged themselves away from running laps in the pre-season training uh, to be with us here uh, in studio today um, and hoping to be involved in those, in those games in the, the weeks and months to come. I'm going to start with the champions, of course. Uh, Richie, you start with you. Um, what, is, what does pre-season look like these days? Are you running endless laps, up sand dunes and all that stuff? Or is it it's much more sophisticated now, I suppose, is it? Yeah, it's a bit more sophisticated <laughs> now. Um, I suppose probably when I would have started would have been run until you can run no more, but it's a little bit more scientific now, which is obviously helping us as players. Um, and yeah, I think you're seeing the benefits of it then when the season starts, lads are fresh, they're coming in, they've done all their gym work, they've done their running, and nobody's after getting flogged. So you feel you feel a little bit better come the start of the season. Uh, we're obviously here at the announcement of a, of a TV partnership, which I mean, you guys are going to be involved in uh, more than likely in a lot of the big games going over the season. Um, how, how good is it to hear that as a player? And is there an extra buzz when you know your game's going to be on TV? Yeah, 100%. Um, as footballers, you want to play in big games on big stages. And when the games are on TV, it's amazing. It is because, um, unfortunately, not everybody can, can get to the game. So I know a lot of the, the older Shamrock Rovers fans that, that can't make to the games. And if they're getting to watch it on TV, It's brilliant, it is, um, and it's just going to bring the league on leaps and bounds, which it has done over the last couple of seasons. And tell me this, do you get the hair done specifically when you know you're going to be on the telly? Yeah, or? I was in hair and makeup for an hour before the lads got here. <laughs> <laughs> just in general then, um, Richie, like you come off four in a row, um, you know, like that's only been done once before in, in League of Ireland history. Do you talk about objectives now, like at this stage of the season, about how you can push on from that? Do you say, do you, do, you, do you just put it away and say, look, we're starting afresh? And are you even talking about making an impact in Europe? Or what are those conversations like at this time of the season? Yeah, we always have, have big goals and big ambitions at Shamrock Rovers. Um, I actually thought last year we could have been a lot better, even though we won four in a row. And, and it was an amazing achievement because um, the history books show that it's not easy to do. So um, we know what 
what we done was was really good, but we felt there was a lot more to come from us. So luckily enough that we were able to keep hold of all our players, um, and we're we're going to be looking to, to to do the five in a row now. And obviously, as you said, the European run we had a taste of that not last year, the year before, um, and it was amazing, not mm -hmm. just for us, but I think for the league in general. Um, so we're hoping to do that and, and we can put the league on the map again. Brilliant. Um, Paddy, come to you because Richie talked about Europe there. Europe awaits um, for Shells. Uh, it must be a lot of excitement around Talca Park heading into this season, is there? Yeah, I think, um, especially last year, it was a great achievement. Obviously, they, they only came up two years ago, Shelburne. Um, so to get Europe last year was a massive achievement. Um, so it's it's a big excitement this year. Uh, the club are really looking forward. to just see the fans already. They're chirping at the bit, kind of wanting to know when you're up to date, the flights, <laughs> the whereabouts. You know, so it's a uh, it's great. You know what I mean to have the club back where kind of it's at the peak of uh, football. You are being managed by one of the sort of the, the big personalities of the league, and from our side of it, like one of the things that's that's great about you know showing the league and showing the matches. Uh, as we'll have in this partnership going forward, is is somebody like Duffer, you know, every time he opens his mouth or every time he's on the sideline, he's he's passionate, he, he's always interesting, people love hearing from him, and everybody knows about his stature in the game. What's he like from your side of, of the house? You know, is, is he that sort of personality on the training ground, in the dressing room? Yeah, he's he's that and beyond, you know, he's, it's like every day you come in, you need, you need to be at it 100%, you know, he drives... There's limits every day that he just drives and drives. Every morning he comes in, he's he's just fully motivated for for that day. You know what I mean? And there's no there's no giving halves. You know what I mean? It's, you're going in, you're going full whack at it, and you know it's great to see that his passion there because you can see it every day. It's it's true passion, and it's great for the League of Ireland, and obviously it's great for me to see it every day. And I think it just brings on the league, and um, especially with someone like him, as you say, the stature that he has. Uh, so yeah, it's great. And him committing to the club towards the end of last year must have, must have been huge as well. So like looking forward then, like Shells have been an upward traje trajectory since they got promoted, seventh, fourth. Like, can you can you go better or where, like, what, where do you set your, your your bars this season? Yeah, well, in various look, competitions. Obviously, looking at last year, we we finished fourth, and I think we dropped a heap of points on the way. You know that we kind of we did we should have done better. Um, but this year, look, we want to obviously improve on it, the points total. We want to improve our league position and obviously doing that is pushing us on towards the top of the table, you know, and every team in the league wants to win the league. So it's, it makes no difference to us. We want to go and win the league. Obviously, Shamrock Rovers are going for five in a row and there's, as I said, every club is going to go win the league, um, go and try win the league and we're one of them. Brilliant stuff. Um, talking about dropping points, Morris, that's not something that you lads did too much of in the first division last season. Um, as I said, the, the cameras will be heading to Eamon DC Park on Monday, the April the 1st. Bowles will be the visitors um, for that game. That whole thing of being back in the big time for the first time since 2017, like it's such a long time for a club, club of Galway stature. Is there a real excitement around uh, around your your club yeah, as massive. well? So stage, yeah. you, you mentioned attendance there in your intro. Like that's one thing Galway's always definitely improved on over the last five years. I think I'm one of few that was actually in the squad when we got relegated in 2017. So it means a bit more to me. Um, stuff like last year, having come through the academy and stuff like that. So yeah, I mean we're hoping to make. I mean, we were unbeaten in MDC Park last year, so we're hoping to make it a fortress again this year and make it a tough game for teams to come there. I know in the past. I think it's been an, an easy and away day for some teams like and yeah I suppose with the kind of mentality John instills in his teams it's, it's going to be a tough game for anyone that comes there this year. How do you adjust then so you, you go through a season being like rampant you know what just to make sure I get it right 30 wins in 36 games uh, just two defeats reaching the cup semi as well uh, and being really impressive in the cup like do you what is the conversation there is it that you adjust your mindset to say lads <laughs> You know, it's not going to be, we're not going to be as, as dominant this season, or do you take confidence from what you did last season? I think it's a bit of both. Um, we're under no illusions, like it's going to be a massive challenge this year, and we're just, we're delighted to be part of it. I suppose we're not here to make up the numbers, like, um, we want to win games and get points. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's not going to be as easy as last year, like, um, so I think we won every game at home last year, and again, like I said, that's something we want to really enforce, like home points for us is going to be massive. Um, if we can win our home games, we'll, we'll be all right. And you have a man, John Caulfield, who's been there, done that uh, at this level as well. What does he bring to the party as a manager? 
Yeah, I mean, the turnaround he's made in the club in the last three years he's been there is huge, like behind the scenes. And of course, on the pitch, he's, he's brought some brilliant players to the club and he's really improved as a team. So, um, yeah, we'd be looking forward to it. Uh, he's obviously delighted to be part, back in the Premier Division. I think it was a goal of his as soon as he took Galway. So, um, we're probably better off not going straight up. I think we're in a much better place as a club now to be able to compete in the Premier Division. So, yeah, we'll give it a good crack while we're there. And, See what comes of it. Exciting times in Galway. Um, and you, the three of you lads have just spoken to there are sort of stalwarts with your respective clubs. We have one of the big transfer movers over the winter here. Uh, Dale Rooney um, from Bohemians uh, is with us uh, as well. Um, congrats on the move, Dale, after a brilliant season uh, with Drogheda. Um, why Bowes? I, I presume there was a fair bit of interest from a few different uh, different clubs. What, what sealed the move for you? Yeah, I just felt like it was the right step for me at the time. Like I've, I've got a young family and I want to be there for them. And I felt Bowes was the right fit. You know, I had good conversations with Pat and uh, Declan and I really felt at home, you know. So hoping to just settle in now and kick on again. And the, the move to full-time football is a big part of that because it was part-time with, with Drogheda. Just explain how that works. Like you're obviously now, you, you were working before and now you're, you're, you're full-time in your yeah, football Yeah, side. It, was, it was tough. Like last year, it was really a long year with work and then travelling up to Drogheda most days, you know, and then you're getting yourself up for training again. So it was a tough year, but it's worked out well now that, that I'm into full-time football. It's my first time doing it, so I'm looking forward to seeing how much I can grow. And uh, are you going to give us another cracker like that goal you got against Pats last season? A few of them? Yeah, I'll try. With the hopefully, cameras? Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. So what, what was going through your head when that ball fell, fell over than just hit it, I suppose? I was a bit tired, so I just thought I'd take a fourth time, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it came off well. Yeah, but damn right it did. Um, as I say, hope for a few more of them um, next season. Um, Richie, I'll come back to you then. You've heard from some of the challengers. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be looking at you against Derry, who we think should be there, thereabouts, with Pat Hoobin obviously joining their ranks as well. Um, what do you have to do to keep ahead of the pack? I think mainly we need to focus on ourselves. Um, we can only control what's in-house. So once we do all the right things, we feel like that we'll have enough to, to go on and win it again. But it's all well and good talking here and saying it. You need to go out and you need to do the hard yards and you need to keep the standards. And you need to, we need to drive the club on as players we do. Brilliant stuff. Well, don't, don't don't be thinking there isn't a representative from uh, from the team that finished third and won the cup uh, last season here. Because I'd like to say that that Brian Brian Kerr ha has joined us, and despite all our best efforts to maintain impartiality, he occasionally lets his uh, St. Pat's uh, bias uh, leak out there. I think there's a microphone there for uh, for Brian, but it's on a it's on a, a, a under a chair, with three seats away. He was. Uh, I was hiding the Tommy. I, I thought you were co cozying up to the boss there. Yeah, well. <laughs> um, Brian, what, what can we expect from, from Pats this season after, I mean, is it a case of just keeping the momentum going uh, and getting more of those young players uh, through into the first team squad? Are they going to challenge for a title? What's your feeling? Um, first, just to, like, to congratulate all the lads that are here, Dale. I was at the match and scored a goal. I wasn't very happy, but it was one of the best goals I've seen in any level of football for a long time. Morris, I'm looking forward to going to Galway for the first game of the season. We're having a bit of a reunion in Galway of a, a, a Pats team from the past that had a lot of Galway players on it, but it should be a great... It should be a, a, a brilliant match and an occasion and all that stuff. And Richie, it, it, congratulations on, on what's gone on in the past. You're talking strong on the future and what fair play to you. And great to see Paddy and such good Nick again and and uh, having such an influence on Shelbourne. Just say, Tommy, it's a kind of funny one you were talking about all the managers. I, I, I kind of think about all the managers and I have good feelings towards them that they all played for me with the exception of Rory Higgins, um, John Russell maybe, all the rest of them play. I, I was lucky enough to manage them so I kind of know their personalities quite well and I think the league is blessed with the quality of the managers they have with the likes of Keith Long, John Caulfield, I didn't manage John but a few scraps from him along the <laughs> way when he was scoring goals for Cork but... Um, Kevin Doherty, the marvellous job he, he, he's done at draw to keep keep long with, with with Waterford, and I think that the league is is in a good place because the, the clubs look a bit more stable. There's not not been much change or change around or jumping around about managers. There's been a bit less movement of players this year, but probably a bit more than some of the supporters of the individual teams would like to see. So <coughs> specifically about Pats, I think <coughs> it'll be tough for them to to uh, 
maybe change the order at the top of the league, I think, again, because it's been changed. Well, it, it, it's it's great to see the young players coming through, but unfortunately, at the moment, the young players are not staying around long enough to have a major impact in the league. And again, from St. Pat's, specifically, specifically their point of view, young Adam Murphy is gone. Um, he, I would have liked him to see him playing the league for another season or two for his own benefit and for the league's benefit. And this is what we're, we're seeing a bit of. There's a, seems like a, an anxiety for the clubs to get their best young assets out of the club and get the rewards for it rather than us seeing them for longer playing with the clubs. I know with Bohemians that's been very much the case. Some of the younger players at Bowers that didn't esta- or Rovers that didn't really establish themselves in the team but have been near it and we see them, we see them emerging in England now. Even Shelbourne, a couple of players from this year, this year's team, a couple of their best, better players and Moylan has gone, am I right in saying that? Jack has gone. So, I just like to see them hanging around a bit more because I think um, all the supporters, the individual clubs, are, are admiring these young players coming through as well as the experienced fellas like the lads we have here. But it'd be good for the league. So I, I, I think with Pats has been a, uh, maybe um, a, a, a little bit more torn over than they would would have liked, but they still have the basis of a go, of a good side with with obviously with Joe Redman back fit, Jamie Lennon still around, signing Rory Keating, a couple of other good signings, the goalkeeper Marcelo from Brazil would be an interesting one. But um I it'll be tough for them to, to compete with the stability that's at Shamrock Rovers, you know, with Stephen and Stephen McPhail and Glenn Cronin and the work they're doing. Well, one of the things I suppose just to round off like that you talk about, you know, maybe persuading those young players to stay a bit longer is is, is the, the momentum and the growth that, that's in the league. Like, Brian, we've worked on Champions League and international football and all that stuff for the last, you know, God knows how many years. I know it's so close to your heart, you know, the, the League of Ireland and, and the fortunes of it. And I know you've always wanted to to, to, to be, be along the ride to help it, it grow. So how, how positive is it for you and how, how happy are you to see sort of an announcement like this where you know, the TV coverage has been expanded and, and, and you know, playing into all that sort of sense of, of well, the league. It's brilliant, Tommy. I mean, I was, I, somebody sent, uh, sent me a text the other day or a WhatsApp thing of um, matches from my, when I was managing Pats in 1990 and it was, it was, it was a highlights programme from the weekend and I didn't get round to it all yet but I started out a bit of it but there was a, there was a couple of minutes from each match. I remember at that time we were, we were delighted about that. I used to tape those. Now, when I ever look back at them, there might have been a bit of Coronation Street or the old grey whistle test on the tape as well when I went to find the bit where the goals were. But now we've got a situation where, you know, regular matches on TV, really kind of exciting cover- coverage, uh, nice build-up before the matches in-, in terms of information. And then, re- you know, really strong camera walk around the game, replays, analysis. And I think uh, both our, our, our coverage and the enthusiasm of the fans in the last few years has brought the league on leaps and bounds. I cannot remember the profile of the league or the attendances uh, been anything like this before in my lifetime. I mean, and I was around, I, I, I was in a pram at the time, but I was around in the 60s when there was decent crowds at League of Ireland football matches, but not to what we've had in the last few seasons. And it's been across, it's across the league, it's everywhere, and there's been a, such an exciting buzz about it. It, it, it. It's been delightful being able to tell people, sorry, I can't get you a ticket for the match, it's sold <laughs> out. That has been... Uh, sensational, I think, in the last few years. And it's down to the, the quality of the players, the quality of the pitches, the coaching standards and the media uh, profile on it. And, and I, I think the television coverage has, has been excellent and has helped the players have a profile in the game, which they haven't always have had, but they deserve to have, given their quality. Brilliant. Um, on that note, then, uh, we'll be hearing a lot more from Brian and obviously we'll be watching the lads uh, in the matches coming up over the next uh, few months and over the season uh, to come. So do stay tuned. We'll round that off there. Um, thanks for, for your attention 